Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, and I've got a tutorial that's going to knock your socks off. Literally, knock them off. Even if you got sandals on, just knock them right off. What we have here is this 3D room, kind of this dark 3D room. I like to call it the room of darkness. And uh, this is actually um, this is actually the room police put you in when you get caught stealing printers from Best Buy. Well, actually, we probably would have got away with it, except that we had to go back there to get the USB cable, so that kind of jammed us up there. Um, okay, let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to be using is a texture from the Riot Gear DVD collection. So if uh, you're not familiar with that, check out videocopilot.net, Riot Gear, awesome collection, if you uh, don't already know. But what we're going to do is go into the Grungy Textures collection. I'm going to go down to the low resolution grayscale ones. And what we have is this grunge gray number 11. It's this kind of cool looking texture. And what we're going to do is take this and drag it into a new composition. Now the next step is to turn this layer into a 3D layer by clicking on the 3D layer switch, hitting W for the Wotate tool. You know I, I heard that the first time um, instead of R because R brings up the rotation, but the tool is actually W, and they actually write it in there somewhere as the Wotate tool. I thought, what? That's got to be the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I'm not going to say that. And yet, here we are. Anyway, W, we're going to rotate it, hold down Shift. Then if we go back to the selection tool, we'll just kind of move this over, kind of creating a wall. Duplicate the layer, edit, duplicate. Move this over to the other side, check it out. Duplicate it again, hit the rotate tool again, rotate on the X axis, the red axis, till it's flat. Bring it down to the floor. And basically we want to position this into a room. And we want to bring this over so it intersects and then up so that the black is kind of where it intersects. So go ahead and do that for both of these layers right there. So it's okay if it overlaps a little bit. So that's good. Then we'll take the floor, duplicate it, move it up to the top, and we might need to create a camera at this point. Just go ahead and use the 35 millimeter preset choose OK. And then I'm going to take the Track Z camera tool and just kind of pull out of this room here and kind of bring it back into view. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the back wall. So I'm going to duplicate the layer again, bring it down, and we're just going to rotate it like so. And we'll just push it in Z space to the back. Doesn't have to be perfect. We can go to the top view, make sure that we line it up. And also, if you want, you can uh, select all the layers and uh, pick a different color so that's easier to see. We'll go back to the active camera, scale this up just a little bit. Okay, looking good. Now we want to create a new light. We'll go ahead and make the intensity 150 and we'll make the color like a blue color. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, let's, uh, let's take the camera and position it inside of this room. So we just kind of move forward and we can even zoom out as we move the camera in just to create the illusion of a little bit of a larger room and the room's a little dark so let's go into the light properties and bring the intensity up so when you use a color the intensity kinda changes based on the intensity of the color so okay now this room's a little small um, what we need to do is make this room a little bit bigger. Now we can duplicate these walls you know forever or there's another way we can do that. So let's take this back layer, we'll call it the back wall. 
By the way, you can hit return on the keyboard. Oh, one other thing. I got an email about how do I show my frames instead of time. Just control click. Instead of time, just control click until you get frames. Nice tip there. That one's free. Um, okay, so we're going to take our back wall. We'll shut it off for a second. Then we go to the effects and presets. Type in motion. And you're going to see motion tile and drag that down to all four wall layers. Now what we want to do is change the output width to 500. We'll copy this, select the other three layers, paste it. Control C, Control V. Um, then we take our back wall and go to the Z axis and you can hold down shift and basically just push that back there until we close it off. Okay, so it's a little dark in here, but let's go ahead and take the uh, track tool and let's back up some. See that? By duplicating the room, we also created a longer hallway. Isn't that cool? I don't know. Have you guys seen this before? Possibly in a promo for a product. I can't remember. Anyway, we can do an animation where we kind of fly down this hallway, and that's pretty cool. Now there is one thing that we have to compensate for and that is the back wall is just way too bright. It's almost like a mirror. Um, and so what we need to do is take the back wall, choose effect, color correction, exposure, and just bring that down. I don't know, yeah, that looks pretty good. Quick interruption, I just want to show you one tip I forgot to go over and that is if you go down to the light intensity, alt click, add that wiggle expression, oops, wiggle. Uh, 3 comma 40 and that'll just kind of give the room a little dreariness uh, as the lighting will kind of flicker a little bit those darn incandescent bulbs okay so we're back in the room and what I want to do is add some text so I'm gonna take the text tool click on here all right final image by the way that's my company we do visual effects and motion graphics, a bunch of fun stuff. And right presents. Looking good. By the way, this font is Arial Black um, Italicized, I think. Turn on the 3D layer switch for both of these. And bam, they go back to the zero, 00 position of our camera originally. If you see our layers are actually still up there. We're actually just looking at the motion tiled addition we've added to our nice little room. So if we move in here and get to our final image text and we can reposition it at eye level. It's important to put things at eye level. Like picture frames and stuff in your house, you want to make sure they're kind of at eye level otherwise they look awkward. That's what my wife told me. And she's right. She's gotta be. And now we can go ahead and set up a nice little camera move um, if we take the orbit camera tool, we can kind of come over to one side. I mean, this is like a, like a full on 3d room, um, you know, a lot of possibilities, but let's go ahead and animate the position and the anchor point or the point of interest move forward and we'll kind of zoom in, excuse me, track in nice and close here. Nice. Kind of offset it over here to the side. And we'll play around with the light too. Make sure we have good lighting. Good lighting, it's important. And we'll even zoom out further. It'd be like this huge zoom in. And we can start uh, we can start out here lower at the ground, coming from the darkness. Or whatever. Looks pretty good. Kind of cool we cross over. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and uh, select the keyframes. Hit F9 for a nice uh, curve, uh, easy ease curve on the uh, keyframes there. Okay, let's go ahead and play that back. Now, the other thing I did in the original animation was add a little bit of a position wiggle. Um, and to do that, I alt clicked on the position, choose wiggle, parentheses, one, comma, 35. Actually, we'll go 
point five comma thirty five and that'll just add a little bit of life at the end you can even turn that down just a little bit and uh, we can also add motion blur to these layers turn on the motion blur switch turn on motion blur um, may want to speed the animation up a little bit just move the keyframes closer together and uh, you create this crazy going down the hall room kind of effect now how else can we enhance this well let's go and pull down the camera options and we have the depth of field we turn that on and uh, nothing really happens um, let's increase the aperture see that see our walls blurn out here increase the blur level alright now one little problem our focus point is not our text how can we fix that well there's a nice little expression we can do we could animate the focus distance and try to figure out where that is but that could take seconds even minutes you know if you're really trying to be perfect so we're gonna actually use an expression so final image I'm gonna hit P to bring up the position then for the focus distance I'm going to alt click adding an expression I'm gonna delete what's there I'm gonna type length L E N G T H nice parentheses then I'm gonna take the pick whip and I'm gonna drag it to the position of final image so what it's saying is the length from the final image text comma to what would I go to oh the camera's position in parentheses so the value we're going to be creating here is what is the length from final image to the camera well it's 573 at this point well what about right here well it's 1230.8 sir I like the sir part that was really nice so what we've created is an expression that will dynamically calculate what the distance is no matter what pretty sweet huh now let's play it back okay don't be fooled that took a long time to render um, that motion blur with the depth of field it's a killer but it's worth it see that pretty nice huh might even add a little more wiggle give that a little more life 35.75 so we wiggle it once every three quarters of a second 35 pixels or units okay so that's the end of the tutorial sorry if I was a little excited today um, I found an extra box of peeps and uh, you know just really boosted my spirit um, and if you don't know what peeps are they're basically these sugar colored marshmallows they look like ducks or uh, no 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 they look like rabbits if you knew what they were you'd you'd understand anyways my name's Andrew Kramer you can check me out at creativecow.net or visit my website videocopilot.net we got some great other tutorials and of course you can purchase riot gear pre-matted organic stock footage anyways I'll see you guys next time for now I'm gonna go see what's at the end of this room looks kinda dark back there